Hello students, it's Shana, your teacher from EspressoEnglish.net. A lot of my students want to become fluent in English. But what's the best way to do this? In this video, I'm going to give you my top 10 tips for learning to speak fluent English. But before I get started, I want to invite you to check out all the courses and ebooks that I've created to help you in the process of becoming fluent. You can click on the link in this video or in the description for more information and to join my courses. The first important thing that you need to know about becoming fluent in English is that there is no magic bullet. That means there is no secret and super effective way to guarantee fluency very fast. Yes, there are different methods, and some are more effective than others. For example, a good English course or program should balance all the areas of language – speaking, listening, vocabulary, grammar, reading, and writing. If any of those elements are missing, for example, if your textbook focuses only on grammar and you never practice listening, then you will have difficulty becoming fluent. But the important thing to understand is that becoming fluent in English, or any language, is a long-term process. So if anyone says they have the secret to instant fluency, don't believe them. You need to invest time and effort in the process of becoming fluent. My second fluency tip is to use English in your daily life as much as possible. It's more important to have frequent contact with English than to have hours and hours of study. Using English for 10 minutes a day, every day, is better than studying for one hour only once a week. Even if you don't live in an English-speaking country, there are still many ways to do this. Here are just a few suggestions for making English part of your daily life. You can listen to English as you drive to work or take public transportation. You can read the news online in English instead of in your native language. You can practice thinking in English while you are doing housework or exercise. Read articles, listen to podcasts, and watch videos in English about topics you enjoy. This is important. You will make much more progress if you are having fun during the process. So really try to use some of these tips to make English part of your daily life as frequently as possible. The third fluency tip is to make sure you balance the areas of language learning. As I mentioned earlier, those areas are reading, writing, speaking, listening, grammar, and vocabulary. And you need them all to be fluent. Many students make the mistake of focusing too much on one or two areas, and they end up being weak in the other areas. One idea is to dedicate one day per week to studying and practicing each area. Tip number four for becoming fluent is to get a regular speaking partner through a conversation exchange website. You can't only study English by yourself. You need to use your English, put it into practice. If you have nobody to speak with in daily life, you can find a speaking partner online through a conversation exchange website. On these websites, you can meet native English speakers who want to learn your native language. This way, you can talk to each other and help each other learn and practice. Here are just a few conversation exchange websites. ConversationExchange.com MyLanguageExchange.com EnglishBaby.com and Speaking24.com You can find many others if you search for conversation exchange. Try to speak with your partner at least once a week. This is so important for practicing as well as building your confidence. Fluency tip number five is one that a lot of students don't think about. It's to read, watch, and listen to English in many different contexts. 
Here's what I mean. If you only watch news programs in English, then you will be able to understand a more formal style of English, but not a typical informal conversation between two native speakers, which is often filled with idioms and slang that you won't hear on the news. On the other hand, if you only watch movies and listen to songs in English, then you might not be able to understand or write a more academic article. And if you only use English for work, then it will be hard to talk about other topics because you won't have the vocabulary. So make sure to diversify your English input with both fiction and nonfiction, formal and informal English, academic lectures and casual conversations, serious subjects and comedy, and so on. Fluency tip number six is a big one. Learn to think in English. This is one of the biggest keys to English fluency, but how can you learn it? Well, there's a step-by-step -step process you can follow. First, begin to think with just some individual English words. So whenever you see something in daily life, try to think of the English word for it. And if you don't know it, then you can look it up later in the dictionary. Then you can progress to thinking in simple English sentences as you go about your day. And finally, you can start imagining entire conversations and stories in your head in English. This is one of the best ways to practice English because if you make a mistake, nobody knows about it. Also, you can practice thinking in English anytime and anywhere. There's no need for a textbook or classroom. The earlier you begin the habit of thinking in English, the easier it will be to speak faster and more fluently. Tip number seven is to say things with different words. Be creative. Two big obstacles to English fluency are lack of vocabulary and pauses or hesitations. This usually happens because you have an idea, but you can't express it in English. It can be really frustrating. However, if you don't know a particular word, try to think of alternative ways to express your idea. This is also important for English sentences. Sometimes you want to say something a certain way because you are translating directly from your native language, but you don't know how to construct the phrase in English. Of course, learning to think directly in English will help you avoid this problem, but also try to be open-minded and flexible in thinking of different ways to say the same message, and this will improve your fluency. Tip number eight to become fluent in English is to practice talking to yourself. This is really an excellent way to develop your fluency and build your confidence. There's no pressure to be perfect, and nobody else will hear your mistakes. Yes, it feels a little bit silly, but you can do it alone where no one will hear you. And it's a great step to putting your English into practice. Fluency tip number nine, don't think too much about grammar and don't worry about mistakes. One of the biggest mental blocks for English learners is being nervous or afraid to make a mistake or embarrassed if you don't speak perfectly. But remember, communication is much more important than perfection. Of course, with time, you will want to correct your mistakes, but for everyday speaking in general, you need to relax. And remember that mistakes are not fatal or terrible. The important thing is to communicate. Finally, tip number 10 for becoming fluent in English is perhaps the most important, and that is don't give up. Never stop learning. I've had a lot of students who study for a few years, then stop, then start again, then stop for a long time, then restart. Maybe you have done this too. The problem is that you often lose the progress you made before, and then becoming fluent takes much, much longer. But the good news is that you don't need to be a genius to become fluent in English. You just need to be dedicated and practice consistently, following all the other tips I've taught you in this video. 
If you do this and you are persistent in learning and practicing the English language, then you will reach your goal of English fluency sooner or later. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I have courses and ebooks to help you in this long process of becoming fluent. You can visit EspressoEnglish.net to learn more. If you liked this video and you learned something that will be helpful to you in your English learning, please share it with your friends or on social media so that we can spread these tips to more and more English learners. Thanks for watching.